Hello, my name is Jared and uh, this video will feature a small commercial CO2 laser tube that someone donated to me. Unlike my homemade laser that was featured in a lot of my um, previous videos, this laser produces a nice round spot. It um, is very consistent, very reliable, uh, very steady in as far as the output. The homemade one by comparison actually peaks uh, has a higher peak power than this one does, but that's only very momentary. A lot of times the power fluctuates on the homemade laser. Uh, very unreliable, very undependable uh, as far as uh, the performance is concerned, and not, not a good tool. More, more of a uh, hobby or more of a um, just building something for fun. So that's how the homemade laser compares to the small commercial one that someone sent me. Yes, in this video, what is featured is some of the things that make the carbon dioxide wavelength very unique. For example, uh, it can be used to cut glass, which is something that would be very hard, uh, if not impossible, using visible wavelengths. And so it has some unique properties because most materials won't transmit the wavelength at all. It can actually be used, be a very useful tool to cut things. Each laser wavelength has its own unique um, property. For example, uh, blue laser light from an argon laser, at least historically, I, I don't know what they use today, but it could be used to do certain kinds of procedures with uh, in the medical field because blood would absorb it being red. The, uh, the range of visible wavelengths, that is, fall somewhere in the area between 400 and 700 nanometers. The CO2 laser is 10,600 nanometers. That's one of its uh, main wavelengths that it produces. So you can see there's a huge difference as far as uh, the CO2 wavelength and normal visible light. The CO2 wavelength, the infrared output that it produces, is uh, close to the uh, wavelength that's produced thermally by the, by the human body. You have to have special materials to focus the beam. It won't pass through glass and normal uh, transparent materials. Uh, you have to have special materials uh, to even uh, pass the output beam from the actual laser device itself. Rock salt is kind of um, kind of unique in the sense that it actually transmits this uh, 10,600 nanometer infrared wavelength. Uh, there are a few materials that will transmit it, but they're not common materials. Okay, this is going to be a demonstration to show how effective an ordinary, uh, well, how effective the laser is is at scoring glass. Um, this is an ordinary 40 watt light bulb and as you can see it works okay I'm gonna take this and I'm going to turn the laser on and show how well it can score the glass that off. There we go. And uh, even though uh, the cut is not even, the original cut was right here, so you can break it off pretty e pretty, pretty straight because you're actually scoring the glass and it does uh, jumble it up quite a bit. But nevertheless, uh, it would be hard to do that with a glass cutting tool. And it can be very easily done with a CO2 laser. This CO2 laser isn't powerful enough to actually cut through the glass unless you set it there for a long, long time. But it will actually score it to where you can just break it open like a normal light bulb here. And so that's just a demonstration of, uh, of its uh, glass uh, cutting capabilities as far as uh, the power of the laser and its uh, wavelength which is absorbed by glass. And, and this, those two factors are what make this possible.